Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today's video I'll be doing a demonstration on how to use the dual action machine polish that I have right next to me here. So you may have seen a video that I did uh, for the machine polish which was on the Halfords car polisher right here. So that was more like a basic machine polish for beginners sort of idea of how to get your hands on it and you know just an idea of using a machine polish for the first time and it's quite an easy one to use. Now we're going to up it and go for the next sort of machine up, which is like this sort of style. Uh, this is a dual action one, so you can get rotary ones as well, which are more for professional and body shop users. So I would highly recommend stay, stay away from one of them ones and try and get your hands on a dual action machine polish. And that's why I do this video, just to give you guys some tips, tricks, ideas of how to use the machine, do's and don'ts. Uh, pads, uh, the products that you should use for each stage and just how you apply it and sort of go through each stage of how you apply it to the paintwork, the products you're using, the sort of the motion of using the dual action machine polish. These are really easy to use. Um, they're safe for beginners or someone that's never used the machine polish before. You can go ahead and use one of these and they are pretty safe. Obviously with anything you use there is obviously risks of damaging the bodywork but the dual action machine polish is the most easiest one for anyone to pick up and use. So let's get into the video and see the sort of products we're going to use, the pads we're going to use, and go over the machine a little bit more in detail. So yeah, before you go ahead and use your machine polish, you want to find the right products for each stage, the right pads for each stage. So I'll be using these pads here. These are not your top quality, but they are better than the cheap ones you can get from eBay. Uh, they're on Amazon. You get five in the pack, um, they're around about 26, 27 pounds, something like that. Um, definitely recommend them, really good, um, do the job really well and the, the quality is really good, they last really long. Obviously there's some more that are high up in the market that you can buy. So obviously if you've got the money to spend then you could go for the next ones up, but these definitely do the job for the price they are. So obviously you're looking at the pads we've got. So they're different styles, you have a heavy, you've got a few in here as well which are more heavy, so you've got the green one is the heaviest and then you've got a medium, a light one and a medium. So for this part of my car, because it's not got really deep swell marks and scratches, very light marks, um, we'll be using the yellow which is a medium cut with the ultimate compound. Then once you've done that stage of things, you want to go on to a polish and then you use a polishing pad which I'll be using the Meguiar's Ultimate Polish with the polishing pad. And then once you've done that stage, then you want to give the car uh, a protection layer so you can use a type of wax. So you, there is a three-in-one one wax, which does obviously more than just wax in the car, but it's still a good option to use because it takes off any light swell marks and stuff like that. And you've got your polishing pad, or you can apply a wax by hand with an applicator pad. So it's just whatever you prefer. Um, if I'm using a machine polish for this stage and this stage, then I probably would apply a wax at the end, which is by hand. Just that's my preference. But if you want to use a machine polish for the waxing stage, you can buy different types of waxes to this. This is just one that I like to use and I recommend, but you obviously there's loads of more on the market. So you can just go ahead and pick what one you like. So let's actually go on to the machine itself. So this is the one I bought off Amazon. It's not a branded, um, dual action machine polish but it's actually a very good one it's got very good reviews online so i just went with this one been using it quite a while now and um does a really good job you'll see in my other videos that i've been using it and it's been really reliable and can't fault it to be honest it does what it needs to do so you have a five inch backing plate which you can uh, fit your foam pads to really easy and that's that goes on there like that so it's really easy to put them on you have a handle on the side to control your dual action machine polish when you're using it. But you can also rest your hand there if you wanted to, whatever way you prefer. So there's two options on that. Um, the machine is a little bit louder than probably the higher branded machines. But to be honest, it's not something that I would really notice. And to be honest, this does the job it want, you want it to do anyway. We On the side here, you have your speed settings. So this one goes up to six. So you can adjust your speed for the job you're doing. So if we're doing the compound stage, you want anything between six and four. And then if you're doing like the polishing stage, then you can bring it down to like a three or two. And then for the waxing, you can have it on a two or one, a bit of lower speed. So you can adjust it for the job you're doing. 
It also, on the switch, you've got the switch there, and also you've got uh, autopilot, so you can click that button and it will keep it running for you, so you can maintain, the, you don't have to rest your finger, so you don't get, you know, your hand fatigue, you can carry on machine polishing, and it just goes and does the job. So let's go and start the machine polish and get it on the car and show you how to do each stage of the machine polish. So before you ever do a machine polish, you want to actually wash the car, two bucket method, clean the car thoroughly so there's no dirt on the car, nothing that can cause you more scratches or swirl marks. Then you want to decontaminate the surface, so you'll go in with a fallout remover to remove the iron particles out of the paintwork. That draws that out and wash that away. Then you want to go in with a clay bar clay mitt, so I actually quite like using the clay mitt. I find that actually easier and it covers more area than a clay bar. It's just my preference that I'd use. So then you want to clay the car. Obviously, my car has been done, it's been clayed, it's uh, been washed and it's ready for the machine polish stage. So the next thing you want to do is just evaluate your surface, see, make sure it's all smooth, there's no dust laying around, just make sure everything looks good, that it's ready for machine polish and it's safe to do. Obviously you can do this outside, You can. I'm inside the garage today, but I do do it outside as well, so you can do it outside and you'll see in my videos that I do the machine polish outside. This is not a problem as long as you make sure each panel that you're doing is ready, prepped and clean of any dust and dirt and it's safe to do so, then you can apply your machine polish to the panels and do your, your machine polishing. So let's get the first part which is the compound stage and let's do that. So what I like to do before I start is actually lubricate the pad itself with the, the compound that you're using. You'll see people using like water as they're using it to lubricate the actual pad so you don't uh, burn through on the paint. With the dual action machine push you have less chance of doing that because obviously the, it's moving in different positions on the bodywork all the time so you never do the same spot over and over again. But what I like to do is actually let the product do the lubrication of the actual panel. So I prime it with the actual product itself. So put a fair amount on the pad, all over, on the corners, everywhere. Then you can get another sort of pad or something that's not in use and just massage that into the pad. So it covers the whole pad. Now this will lubricate the pad fully and it's primed, ready to go. So that's what I do first, is just get the pad lubricated with your product. So then the next thing you want to do is place your pad on the, the dual action machine pod itself. Get your product that you're using and apply a few dots around the outside. And there. So that's your pad all ready to go with the compound. So now you've got your pad all primed, you just want to mark out the area you're going to work on. So what I recommend is working out the area, probably no bigger than that to start off with. For each stage, you want to start in small areas when you are doing the compounding stage. So try and work in four areas, like so it's about a four by four area, and then do it the same across the whole bonnet. Compounding is a very slow process. It can take a lot of time, a lot of patience to get it right. It's not a five minute job. It's gonna take you a good few hours to do, you know, even half a car, it can take a long time. So it's something that you've got to be prepared for that's going to take a long process as you go through the stages. So once you go to the polishing, obviously it gets a bit quicker and then the waxing obviously is a lot quicker than that. So every time you go up, the jobs get easier and quicker. So first of all, you want to try and keep your wire off the bodywork. So I just put my leg there in front of it because on this one, the cable's not the longest. So I'm thinking about extending the cable so I've got a bit more length because I like to put it over my shoulder. With this machine, you are limited with the length. So I just sort of put my leg around it so it doesn't touch the paintwork. So the first one, you're gonna just set it to zero, uh, not zero, no zero on this, you're gonna set it to one, just to give you a base layer. So we just apply the compound over the paintwork first. So let's get onto that. So 
now you've got your base layer on, you want to now um, go up the speed. So you're going to go for a, probably, I'm going to sit at about four. And you're going to go in a hatch motion. It's a very slow process. You've just got to take your time, go along the panel, make sure you've worked in all the panel, and you're going to go in a hatch motion. Obviously, this car, you've got a lot of lumps and bumps. So you've just got to be careful on these raised bits that you don't put too much pressure on. Just let the machine do the work. It's quite weighted, so it should be easy to do it. So let's get on with the first stage of the compounding. that I didn't turn the machine on until I had it on the panel and when I stopped the machine I had it on the panel still this is just to minimize it spraying out you know product over your window screen and parts that you've already polished and stuff you want to try and minimize that product spraying out everywhere so I also want to demonstrate on the hardest part of the bonnet here which has got loads of bumps and lumps and edges and you know where the car is it's very much the hardest part to machine polish so yeah, so you don't want this to dry for too long. And let me just get my buffing pad. So you, yeah, you don't want this to dry too long. Make sure this is no dust free in that. Make sure there's no nothing on the actual, you're not gonna like mark your work that you've just done. So you wanna go along and take the product off. And then switch it over and then it just buffs off nicely. And this product is so easy to take off the paintwork, as you can see there, really easy. Now, obviously this, this body paint, this, this bonnet had hardly any marks anyway, but you know, any that did have, it's just taken it off on that one go. Because obviously the, the one you're using is quite a strong pad, so it will take out any scratches or marks. So yeah, that's the compound done. I'm just going to finish off the rest of the body off camera, then I'll get on to show you how you're going to do the polishing, which you can then up the area that you're polishing. So let's get, let's get on to the polishing after I finish off the bonnet. So before I actually um, do the polishing, I just want to check what I've done. So I've got some light in the garage so you can see most of the marks, but obviously you go over with your torch and you can just go along and check for anything you may have missed, any little scratches, swell marks. Uh, my bonnet is in very good condition because I maintain my car quite regular but if you've got still swell marks and scratches left after the first stage of compounding you may have to go over again so it's just evaluating the surface after you've done it just to make sure you're happy with your work before you go on to the polishing stage so it's much the same again with your pad you obviously prime it up you get your pad ready, you then mark out your area. You can work in a bigger, um, a bigger, bigger light area. I'm just going to do this area for now just to demonstrate what I'm doing. Same process again, but you can move a little bit quicker and you're just applying the polish to give it that sort of glossy shine finish before you apply like the protection of a wax or something. 
So let's just go through and show you how I would apply it. So I would like this to be on probably setting free. So you've now worked your product in just ready for you to now go in the cross hatch motion again so you're going to work it up but you can go a little bit quicker this time just because you don't have to uh, be as precise with removing swirl marks and stuff this is just to give you that shine and that polish and that finish so basically I'm just going to work in the cross hatch motion working my way up so let's get it going So you can actually see it's a much faster process. I have um, splattered some product on the other side, so I'm gonna have to wipe it off at the same time because if you let that dry on, um, it can be really hard stuff to get off. So you don't want it to dry on too much. It's not like a wax where you can leave it to dwell for a long time. With these products, you need to apply it and wipe it off straight away. So that's why I recommend to do it in sections. So same process as the compound. Wipe it, switch your towel over, and then buff. And you need to just go a little bit past the area you worked on because you can get some product splattered everywhere. So you need to just cover all of the panel just to make sure you've covered off well. And it's hard to see on camera, but it does give you a little bit more of a gloss and shine. If you read on the bottle what it says, it's just for a deep reflective and high gloss and it eliminates the fine swell. So your compound takes out more deeper stuff. This takes out a few fine bits. This is like the finishing pot once you've done the compound. You will see that I did the hardest section again, which is this bit here, because obviously the, the curb of the car is hard. If you're doing it on the flat surface, it's gonna be much easier to do. But you can just see that even applying it to the harder areas, it's still pretty relatively easy for anyone that's just beginning out. So don't be scared of edges. You just don't want to be on it for too long and just sort of pass over it and go past. And you can then apply the product all in. So I'm going to get all this on the car and that'll be that finished. And then we just talk about the waxing and stuff, but probably won't actually show you how you do that because I'm not going to probably do it with machine polish. So I've applied the polish now to the whole of the car. Um, and it's hard to see on camera that it gives you much more of a shine because it already gave a good colour change with the actual compound itself when you applied that first. It really brought the colour. But the polishing is just to bring you back that high sort of shine and gloss, remove any last light swell marks that you may have missed and just brings back that colour. So yeah, it's finished off really nicely, looking really, really good. Obviously the next stage you would want to be applying a wax or some kind of protection. I would recommend using an IPA panel wipe, something like along that line, just to remove any oils and residue that's left behind after the machine polishing. This just gives a better bonding, so the wax can bond better. Obviously critical if you're using a ceramic coating after this, because you want the ceramic coating to sit on top of the clear coat and really like bond to the paintwork, and it won't do that if you don't use a panel wipe after you've done the machine polish, so it's always recommended to do that. I'm going to get the wax on the car now, quickly on the bonnet, just to finish it off. Um, get the rest of the car sort of done and I'll give you some aftershots of the bonnet once I've waxed it. Okay, there. So that's the full machine polish. Um, wax done. It's looking really good. So yeah, really happy with that.
one final tip before I end the video is just to make sure you clean your polishing pads properly. You can use like a wax remover wash type product or as my friend Willie at Shaq's Detailing Channel gave me the idea and it's a great idea is to use fair up liquid. It really does break down the oils in the compound and waxes on your pads and removes it really well. So obviously I'm cleaning it with one hand as you can see just to give you the idea of like cleaning them out and that but obviously off video you're going to clean them properly. Um, use two hands really get that wax out of them pads so they're clean and fresh for the next go Once I've cleaned them you will see that the pads look really clean and the wax has been removed And this means they are now ready for your next next time you're going to polish the car So hope you enjoyed this video hope you've learned something hopefully it's helpful drop me any comments below of any questions anything you want to ask so if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel as always thank you for watching and i'll see you on the next one